Hello everyone, I am Argamowicz, and I'm here to talk to you about taking on commissions. So, this is going to sort of be, this is going to be for both digital art and for V-Roid art. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am a professional freelance artist. I've been selling art at anime conventions for, oh man, like eight years. Yeah, uh, so, and now it's what I do for a living, is I live off my commissions. Um, so, let me talk to you about how to get started. Um, if you have never taken a commission before, uh, one of the things you should know is that you need to be, well, you don't need to be over 18, but it's really good if you are over 18. Uh, because doing a commission is kind of signing into a contract and if you're under the age of 18 I don't think you're legally old enough to at least under the age of 13. You're not supposed to however uh, trying to take payment uh, Under the age of 18 is going to be very very difficult and It might even be illegal in some countries. So if you are under that age I recommend just taking the time to continue to learn your craft until you're at least of 18 years old or you have your parents permission and they allow you to use their PayPal account but keep in mind that they will be the ones in charge of your money that being said uh, if you are 18 and older and you want to start taking commissions for artwork and you're not sure how much to charge well honestly it does vary and this works for pretty much everything so if you're doing a traditional medium say traditional artwork or um, Let's say you're crafting something with your hands, like you make something out of clay. What you're going to want to do is tally the uh, amount of time it takes to make one of the items or the art piece. And you're going to want to multiply that by what you think is a fair wage. Some people who are just starting out tend to go a little cheaper, uh, like $5 an hour. So if it takes you about an hour to two to kind of do a quick little doodle sketch, maybe that's how much you would charge for that. But if you're doing traditional, you'll also want to add on top of it your the cost of your medium. So if you make something out of clay, you're going to want to charge the cost of that clay and a percentage of the tools used for that. So if, let's say the tools cost you like $10, and the clay costs you $5 and it takes you an hour and you want to charge $5 an hour, um, you would charge the $5 for the hour it took, the $5 for the clay, so you're at $10, and then a small percentage of the tools. Granted, tools do wear out, but not very quickly, so you're not going to be able to do like $10 for the tools, but instead you could do a small percentage, like 10 cents for each one. So now you're at, uh, ten dollars and ten cents and if you feel like you want to just round it down to ten dollars you absolutely can if you want maybe even round it up to eleven dollars but that's pretty much how it works when you're working with uh, traditional mediums uh, some tools are much more expensive for example when I do watercolor work I charge a lot more because my watercolor set ran about five hundred dollars on top of the brushes and then the watercolor paper and then the time it takes to like stretch out the paper and then you know sketch out the image and paint the image and then if I used carbon paper and all that other stuff like a lot of factors go into it usually artists tend to round them up when they get a general idea of how much things cost or like eh, it's cost about this um, now let's say you're working in a digital media, which is what digital art and Vroid is going to be. Uh, that usually you would just charge for your time. Uh, you can technically charge a little bit for your computer use, but it's going to be very, very microscopic in comparison as you have to divide the amount of the computer itself that is used and the amount of like electricity that is used per just working on this uh, as opposed to everything else and it's only the time you're working on it same with when you're working on like a piece so if let's say you're working on a 3d model and it takes you two hours to do it and you decide you're going to charge uh, fifty dollars an hour but you spend like a good 
30 minutes just dinking around on Twitter or I don't know YouTube you can't charge for those 30 minutes those those aren't working hours that's just you know dinking around <laughs> Uh, so what you're going to want to do is figure out how long it will take you to draw something. Like, a, you just approximate, like, okay, I know that it'll take me, mm, like, two hours in order to do this type of work. Then I'm going to charge, you know, the $50 to $100 an hour. However much you feel like you should charge for your work. Um, and yeah, if you're just starting out, most people aren't going to charge, you know, like, $50 an hour. Um, usually that comes with speed and skill like so I charge a lot more for my time but I also have been doing it a lot longer I give a high quality with a high speed um, and usually there is this little simple that go this little like image that goes around that you can like choose to you can choose cost quality or speed uh, but you can't pick all three because you just can't pick all three. Um, and so for me, people tend to get the quality and the speed, but it does cost them a little bit extra. Uh, so when I start a model, I usually finish it within a few days, if not one day. Uh, and on top of that, it's usually a fairly decent quality. Um, so yeah, pretty much what you're going to want to do is figure out how long it'll take you to do the project. So, for example, if a project for me is more detailed, it's going to take me a lot longer, so I tend to charge a bit more. When I have to bring things over into Unity, that's going to take more time, so I charge a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much how it works. And people, uh, the more you do it, the more you realize, like, how much the certain things are going to cost. Like, you'll know that, oh, like, doing a full body sketch is going to take me, like, two hours, whereas just doing, like, a head is just going to take me, you know, like, 30 minutes to an hour. So you're going to want to charge more for a full body picture than just a head picture. Uh, and when working with a model, if someone's just in a t-shirt and jeans, it's not going to cost the same as somebody who wants angel wings and a long tail and like this crazy animu hairstyle with all these details on their outfit which is why it's really hard when people come up to me and they're like hey how much is it gonna cost to get a model from you and I'm just like ah, it's, it's gonna cost something because I don't know what you want <laughs> um, also if you're looking to commission somebody please make sure you have your reference sheet ready and explain to the artist what you're looking for I've had many people come up to me and just be like, uh, I want you to, I want to know how much it's going to cost for my character. So I'm like, well, do you want a digital drawing or did you want a model and what does your character look like? Like, um, there's so many factors to work in there, but you know, these are basics to just kind of start with. Uh, yeah. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Um, when you're starting out, a lot of people tend to undercharge for their art, which is okay for starting out, like, because you need to get that practice in, and you need to get that rep in, um, but don't stay there, and don't feel, um, afraid to change your prices and up them as you grow, because the more practice and the, and the more time and the learning you put into your craft, the more it's valued. Definitely. I know a lot of people who get afraid and are afraid they're going to lose their customers, but trust me, you don't want to undervalue yourself. And for anyone who commissions an artist and says, I'm not going to hire you because you don't charge enough or you undervalue and or I'm afraid you're going to just produce shit because of whatever. Nah, that's, that's dumb. I've had people do that. People are dumb. Look, people are going to charge what they think that they, their time is worth. Um, and if that's what they're willing to do, like, just look at the examples. Make sure you have examples, too, if you're going to uh, offer commissions. Show examples of work that you have done. Uh, for myself, I never show my own model off as an example because I know that I'll put way more time and effort into my own model than I will on a commission. And that's not to say I don't put effort into other people's commissions. What I'm saying is is that I have this model for two years I'm going to keep making subtle adjustments to it so I feel that people who use their own model as an example of what you can expect is kind of misleading 
because you're always going to do fine-tune adjustments and you're going to spend tens tens of hours if not even a hundred hours on your own model whereas you're not going to spend that kind of time on somebody else's so it's best to show other people the models that you can make within like that allotted time um, and never take on something you don't know how to do if you have to go and ask somebody else to teach you how to do something then one, it's not fair to that person. I've had a lot of people come to me being like, look, I don't know how to make this thing, but I took on this commission. Can you teach me how to do it? And I'm like, no, I'm not getting paid to make this commission. The, you took it on. You shouldn't have taken it if you don't know how to do it. And I understand the temptation to want to make that money, but honestly, you're going to deliver an inferior product and that could give you bad reviews. And word of mouth is one of the best things you can possibly get as a commissioner uh, in order to get more business. Now, if you're looking for where you can find business or drum up business, I've often given away free art to kind of just get my name spread around. It's under the stipulation, hey, as long as you credit me, I'll give you this free art. And yeah, it's working for exposure, but it's under my own terms. Uh, I usually did that at places like the Draw For Me on Reddit. And sometimes on Twitter, I'll draw stuff for people and it gets kind of retweeted. And then like, I just make sure to mention, Hey, I'm also doing commission, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, you know, you just kind of got to find your own audience and that's, it's slow. It's really slow to begin with. Trust me. It took me like a good long time before I was able to make a decent amount of steady living off of my commissions. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't even happen in the first couple of years. <laughs> It takes a while, but yeah, um, that's it. So yeah, if you have questions, you can ask them down below. Uh, please don't send me images of your work and ask me how much you should charge because it's all relative, you know? Um, but yeah, and if this video has helped you at all, I know it's a little like this combobbled and incoherent, but yeah, <laughs> uh, please give it a like and uh, share it if you want. Um, it does help me out. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye. Bye.